Let's talk about solar panel radiation. I'm amazed at how many solar panels I see on top of houses nowadays, and they are still popping up like gangbusters. With clean energy incentives and potential cost savings, it has been hard to resist jumping on the bandwagon, but there are drawbacks. One of them being the extra electric and magnetic field, EMF, radiation they produce, which has been linked to various health problems. Be sure to stick to the end so you can learn how to get free EMF protective gear delivered to your door. Let's cover everything you need to know about solar panel radiation so you can make an informed decision and know how to decrease your risk if you already have panels installed, or even have a neighbor with solar panels that may be pushing dirty electricity, or EMI, into your home. At the basic, solar panels turn sunlight into electricity, but it can't be used as soon as it hits those panels. It has to be changed. So it first has to travel through the wires and through something called an inverter. So the inverter is what changes it from raw solar energy to the proper voltage in your country, like 120 volt in the United States. So here's a tip. Keep in mind that anywhere energy travels, but especially where it's converted or a wireless signal is emitted, are often hot spots for EMF. Much of the time, solar panels create more electricity than what your house needs in any given moment. You can either store this extra energy in batteries, called a battery bank, to use later when it's cloudy or dark outside, or you can send that extra energy back to the power grid and get paid for it. Cha-ching! The electricity goes from the inverter through a power line that is monitored by your home smart meter. And be aware that smart meters can be a dangerous source of EMF radiation all on their own because they use wireless technology to communicate with the utility company so they don't have to manually check your meter. It's always a good idea to find out how often a signal is being transmitted from your smart meter so you can take precautions as needed. If you want to know more on that, there's an in-depth guide linked in the video description below. The solar panels themselves are pretty safe and typically produce minimal EMF, much less than what you would get next to a power line. The power inverter is the issue that can create a lot of dirty electricity, one type of EMF. One way dirty electricity is created is when more electricity is available than what is being used. For example, dimmer switches can cause a lot of dirty electricity as they throttle back the power. Your chain is the lights dim. Another way is when changing the type of voltage of electricity. In the case of solar panels, the energy comes in as a direct current and then the inverter changes it to an alternating current, AC which creates high levels of EMF. And this EMF is called dirty electricity. And dirty electricity is kind of like this invisible buzz that can be radiating from the wiring all over your home that can be mildly agitating for some, while for others can trigger inflammation and disease in the body, like cancer. One study found that children raised close to power lines had substantially higher risk of developing childhood leukemia. Power lines produce high levels of ELF, extremely low frequency EMF radiation, much like the dirty electricity from the inverter. So personally, I would steer clear of solar panels if I had the choice, unless you're trying to have a self-sufficient home living off the grid. And it's just because the health risks for me aren't worth the potential financial benefits. But if you already have solar panels or must have them for some other reason, then here are four tips to help you drastically minimize your exposure and be better protected. Let's count them down from four to one. Tip number four, distance is your friend. I say this one a lot. When it comes to EMF radiation, how close you are to the source of radiation makes a big difference. Even moving your phone an inch away from your body will greatly reduce your exposure. And that's the reason why I recommend using your speakerphone if you do need to take a call on your cell. As a rule of thumb, the strength of the radiation decreases by the distance squared. So if you double the distance from your phone to your head, the strength would be four times less. Or if you're 10 times the distance, the radiation would be 100 times less. Remember again, the distance is your friend. That's why you should never live next to a big power line or cell tower if you can help it. In the case of solar panels, be sure to set it up in a way that the inverter is far away from living and sleeping areas as possible. And then you can use an EMF meter to identify hotspots, high EMF areas, and take any additional steps. Tip number three is get an EMF meter to identify hotspots. I have a few. So this one is an old AM radio, helps identify dirty electricity. This one is another meter to help identify dirty electricity produced by Greenway. There's another one by Stetzer. And basically you plug it into the wall and it will give you like an, an audio output of the um, interference traveling through your wires. And also a manual reading up here to help know that when you're using your filters is reducing the dirty electricity within your home. And then having this one is really great for all the other wireless signals traveling through your home. Once you've created as much distance as you can between sources of EMF and you, inverters, routers, power lines, and the like, you can use EMF meter to make sure you have low levels. When it comes to meters, look for ones that are capable of detecting electric, magnetic, and RF radiation that has good reviews. This means a detector will have multiple sensors. 
So in this case, this sensor has three. It'll sense electric fields, it'll sense magnetic fields, and then it has a tri-axis sensor for radio frequency. And tri-axis just means it has a sensor set in different directions so it can get a better reading. Just know that in general, uh, meters like these that are all in one typically aren't the most accurate. They'll do pretty good at identifying hotspots and knowing when they're down to a pretty good level. But if you are EMF sensitive or you're gonna do this as a profession, then you will need to invest in kind of this suite of sensors, which is about four, three or four different ones. One for your electric fields, one for your magnetic fields, and then one for your radio frequency fields. And hopefully in the future we get ones that can identify 5G. We don't have any, well, there are some, they're really expensive. We typically recommend the Trifield TF2 if you want something simple or the GQ EMF390 for one that has a little bit more feature set. It has more screens, more ways to read the data. So if you're a data freak, go for this one. If not, get a Trifield TF2. It's just straightforward. And then don't forget to get an old fashioned IAM radio. This will basically pick up all the buzz coming out of your wires. Be sure to check the description for a demo video that I'll be doing soon, where you can just kind of hold it next to your, your breakers and you can see which ones have the problem, where the, where the dirty electricity is coming back and causing chaotic frequencies all to your home, all right? Just make sure it's an old one that doesn't have the built-in filters. There are also dirty electricity detectors, as I mentioned, like this one. With your meter in hand, you can go find the hotspots by turning things on and off and noting the before and after readings. You can use covers or filters to reduce any areas that have overly high levels of EMF. Oh, be sure to check the video description for the list of acceptable levels, which it varies from country to country, person to person. But in here, I have a couple that are kind of like, this is what it should be at the low level. Here's danger, Will Robinson, danger. Stay away from these ones, okay? Tip number two is eliminate hotspots if at all possible. Eliminate, you want them zero, if possible. Sometimes you'll find that small devices and appliances create a lot of dirty electricity. For example, this one right here. This is, um, I think it was a wireless charger of some sort that I grabbed from my sister's house and it was just pumping out tons of dirty electricity. Check this baby out. So I just plugged in this wireless thing, charging thing, almost to 2,000 millivolts. And tip number one is to use covered shields or filters to further reduce your EMF radiation if necessary. These can be effective at reducing your amount of EMF. With smart meters, if you can't have an analog meter, you can use a cover or a shield. It's really the easiest way to combat the outdoor EMF radiation. You can use anti-EMF barriers like paints, which can be applied if you live close to power lines or to a cell tower. If you opt to go with paint, Warmer's 5 liter RF shielding paint is a good option to start researching from. Two applications will block up to 99.998% of EMFs. Let's, more decimals there. The more decimals, the better. You can also use dirty electricity filters when you find that you have high EMI or dirty electricity levels. These can help reduce it. You will only need one meter, but you may need a number of filters depending on how bad your dirty electricity is. Typically, two filters to a room, but if you have a lot of electronics and things plugged in, you might need more. Oh, and what's nice about these ones, there's a couple filters out there on the market that I know of. There's Green Wave and then there's Stetzer. Stetzer's older, but the nice thing about Green Wave is you have a plug on the bottom so you don't lose your outlet. You can plug it in and then plug it on the bottom, which is nice. And if you have solar, it's just likely that you're going to have a dirty electricity problem and we'll have to do something about it. And even if you have neighbors with solar panels, that might be traveling down and up into your house with that dirty electricity. So it's worth checking out. Basically, you just plug this in and watch the levels drop. Here, I'll show you in a video. Okay, I'm gonna hear showing you how the Green Wave EMI meter, this is the dirty electricity meter works. We'll, we'll plug it in up here so we have room to add the filter so you can see the difference here. So as we plug it in, you can uh, hear that sound. That's that's the dirty electricity. 334, right about there. Now check out when I turn the light on, it jumps up quite a lot. You can hear it changes the lights dim. Now I'm just gonna take this filter. You notice just an immediate drop, 96% reduction. But like I've said before, filters aren't necessarily the best option. The best option is to eliminate it completely. These are just going to drop the levels. Flipping the breaker at night is what many EMF sensitive people do so they can sleep better at night and feel healthier. Other areas worth investigating are light bulbs. Use incandescent Edison bulbs rather than LEDs or CFLs. Those are the compact swirly twirly light bulbs. For sure, stay away from those. And Wi-Fi. If you must have Wi-Fi, then you can get a router guard. Hard wiring is best, but you can also look into getting a low EMF Wi-Fi router. If you still have rooms with overly high levels of EMF, 
Try flipping the breaker and measuring before and after to identify if it is a wiring issue. If you still can't identify the source, then consider hiring an expert to take a look. Sometimes there are electric wirings below or alongside your home that can be an issue. So if you've been waiting for it and you're wondering how to get free EMF gear delivered to your door, just click the link down in the video description and it explains it all. Oh, and before you go, if you're still on the fence about solar technology, then keep studying and make an informed decision. Solar panels do have benefits, but they also have drawbacks. Hopefully as technology advances, the amount of dirty electricity will become much less of an issue. And if you prefer reading, you can go to emfsafefamily.com and read the articles. In the meantime, have an EMF safe family and I'll catch you next time. Bye. I'm just gonna read this, but we might have already have this. <laughs> Stand up, people. Here. There we go, right there. Good. Oh, sheesh. Till next time. <laughs>